When we look at the history of Germany in World War II, it's very surprising because in such a short period of time, they achieved a lot. Most of these findings was from doing evil activities like Joseph Mengele, but their industry was actually very advanced. Today, we want to look at one of these technology, the Horton Ho 229, an insane idea of an aircraft. The radar could not detect it whatsoever. It was the fastest plane at its time and it could go to the other side of the pond without refueling. The Germans were really trying their hardest to finish this early, and that's for only one thing, to attack New York City. The official name of this airplane was the Ho-229, but the nickname was the American Bomber. And what they meant was that this bomber is designed specifically for the United States. A plane like this was originally designed in the early 1930s, way before World War II was even an idea. Even though there was no war yet, but Hitler knew that the United States was one of the main enemies, and that is why they were always looking for tools to attack the Americans, and he always believed that they have to attack the US. In 1937, the Germans designed a plane called the ME-264 and they believed it could easily fly to the United States. In the year 1938, the commander of the Nazi Air Force by the name of Hermann Göring said, We are designing weapons that could get to the other side of the pond, and that means the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. What he was trying to do was threat the US, but he never used the US name. This is in a way where World War II has not begun yet. Year after year passes and World War II has started, but ME-264, even though it could fly to the United States, but it couldn't carry anything with it, so it had to fly alone, and at that point, there was no reason to send it there. We get to the year 1944, the Russians are moving forward towards Germany, but the Germans believe even if the war is at a loss, we need to attack New York with this aircraft. The Nazi Air Force told its workers that we need an aircraft that could go 11,000 kilometers and it could carry 4,000 kilograms worth of bomb. They needed 11,000 kilometers so it would fly from Berlin all the way to America and back without refueling. But aircraft engineers in Germany would say, a design like this is impossible. There has to be a stop for refueling. And they would choose the Azure Island in the middle of the Atlantic. And they said, if they can refuel in this island, it's possible. In the middle of all this, there were two brothers that considered themselves aircraft engineers, and they're called the Horton brothers. They had a design that was meant for a bomber exactly like this, and with all their calculations, this bomber can do whatever the army needs. Just like we said, these two designed this aircraft from the 1930s, and at that time, it seemed unbelievable that such thing could be built because there was a plan to put six jet engines on there. And at this time, the most advanced planes had impellers. This design of an aircraft is called a flying wing. And what it means is that the entire aircraft is a wing and there's no actual body or tube. And because of this design, the Horton brothers believe that this plane will use 30% less fuel than an ordinary plane. And they believe the most important thing about this plane is that it will not be seen on the radars. And that's mostly because of the design. It's good to know that what the Horton brothers said about radars was one of the first times they mentioned this, because before then, there was no anti-radar aircraft. This was one of the final designs the Horton brothers drew. 
they first named it the Horton 18. The width was about 40 meters and the length was about 19 meters. And if you count the whole plane, it's about 150 square meters. Look at this plane. It doesn't seem like it belongs to the 40s. If someone saw this thing back in the day, they'll probably think it's a UFO. Even if you see this fly over your head, it's extremely insane. Imagine you saw it in 1944. The normal speed of the Ho 229 was about 750 kilometers an hour, but it had a top speed of 900 kilometers an hour, and that made it the fastest aircraft at that time. They never actually got to use this plane like that. But when the Horton brothers were building this plane, they said it could easily go to New York, bomb and come back. There were two guns up front on this plane and it also had a rear gun. And anyone that wanted to attack this plane, it had weapons to counter attack. Technology really leads to a design that doesn't make sense and it's insane. And you might not believe it, the chassis of this aircraft was made from wood. And that was another reason why you could not see it on the radar. On February of 1945, this plane was pretty much finished and they wanted to test it. There's only two months left until the war is over, but the Germans would not let this project go whatsoever, even though they were losing almost every battle on the eastern and western front. This plane was about to get done and they still haven't tested yet. The Horton brothers were very good designers, but I wouldn't call them master engineer. And that is why aircraft engineers will always critique their work and always tell them that your design will never actually work in the real world. The engineers would say that if you want this thing to actually fly, you need to add a wing like this to it. The brothers would disagree and tell them that this brings the weight up and you can't do it anymore. But the brothers still went at it and tried to fix the issues. They said, we're gonna make the engines from six to two engine and make it a little bit smaller. They took the same aircraft and modified it and made it two jet engine. They say they tested this aircraft, but it was too late because the allies were inside Berlin and the Germans decided to scrap the plane so nobody gets it. There are pictures of this aircraft flying, but we're not sure if it's real or not. It's good to know that the Horton brothers successfully changed this aircraft in under two months. They tested it, but they never used it. Because in April 1945, Berlin had fallen and that's two months after they started to redesign the aircraft. All the designs and writings of this aircraft were in the Americans' hands now and the US even has a piece of this aircraft. And they realized that the Germans had actually built three of these aircrafts and one of these were destroyed. They don't know what happened with the other one but one of them was in pieces and the Americans had it. And right now this piece is in a museum in Washington DC and you could go and see it. When the Americans reviewed the design of this aircraft, they wouldn't believe it. These two brothers were considered geniuses at that time. There could have been fear in their eyes because they believed that if they did not defeat the Germans, this thing would attack New York. It's good to know that the Horton brothers designed the same style aircraft for a passenger one. But obviously something like this would never work because it would be too complicated and expensive. So what happened to these Horton brothers? One of them called Raymar Horton ran away to Argentina and they don't know much about him. But one of the brothers by the name of Walter Horton stayed in Germany and he basically started helping the West. This style of an aircraft came alive in the 1970s when the Americans were trying to design a bomber with the same design. The US started in 1970s and by the year 1989 they had done it and they built the B-2 stealth bomber and this is one of the most expensive aircrafts in history.
Walter Horton was alive until 1998 and he lived in West Germany. Even though he was part of the Nazi regime, he helped the Westerners and that is why they pardoned him. And he eventually died in Germany. Even though the Nazis were not in power for a long time, but they brought a lot of technology in this world. And one of the most insane things they figured out was rocket and missile technology. A lot of people believe that if the US did not capture Nazi scientists, they could have not gone to the moon. But let's be honest, it would have taken a long time to figure out how rockets work. Forget about satellites and moon landing. In terms of medicine, the Nazis did a lot of experiments. As you know, the Axis powers were the Germans and the Japanese mainly. And they did a lot of experiments in terms of medicine at that time. But in extremely horrifying types of tests. If you've seen our video about Japan's Unit 731 or Joseph Mengele, Angel of Death, you should really check them out and see what type of experiments these people were running. 